Hi, uh, yeah, this is Derek Thomas McNabb, um, the creator of The Clown, and I'm here to talk about the new movie. Now, these opening titles, accompanied by music from Moby, and terrific music. I heard it when I was in a car, and I was just thinking, this would be great for my movie. This one's called The Sky is Broken. These opening titles, I wanted to do an actual opening title scene rather than waste them on footage. So, the opening titles are placed over stills of each place we visit in the movie in chronological order. So, first scene where the clown, it said the clown was on the beach, against the beach, and this the first scene is on the beach. And if you make note and watch the movie, you'll see every scene corresponds to each image in the beginning. I promise not all the things I say will be as boring as that. <laughs> what I am here to talk about is I'm here to talk about behind the scenes. This beach scene was filmed by Robert Heap, who played Robert. And... Part of the new storyline was to introduce this boy who was mentioned in the first film as the boy who showed me the clown. And this is the boy, which is me, a cameo by me. I'm not credited, I un I'm uncredited. Now I've got reasons for asking of these questions which are revealed at the end of the movie. Basically I'll spoil it now. I'm a ghost and I am wandering the beach, hoping that someone will set me free. Basically solve the riddle of the curse. And Katie is that girl. Really good how that faded into the clown. These amusements were at South Shore Caravan Park. <gasps> I've disappeared. And there's Robert there in the background, by the way. Which wasn't supposed to happen. That's supposed to recreate the look in the first one. I don't think it did, but it's very good. You would not believe how many times we've filmed this scene. We did it originally on two stools, which are just about left of this table. This is a recreation of the pub scene, just to tie it with claws and stuff, rather than use the old one. That was where the look came in, but it wasn't as good as the last one. So this is later on that night. Uh, a mirror image. So, the only time when the character can look at the camera is when it's playing a mirror. Or a point of view shot, obviously. Sister so Shell Kitty is alone, which is what Kitty is a lot throughout the movie. She's alone. Even though she has a brother. He gets possessed and that makes him more alone. And solving how to unpossess a brother is her battling what the hell are you doing, not being alone anymore. It's all about being alone. <laughs> My reflection was in that window. But on post production, I just made the brightness dark and my reflection disappeared. Now the, that's amusements from the future. This is back in 2003. It's very different to what there were. But not, it was very different, but you can't tell, luckily. General things are still in the same place. But this was very deserted. There was, there was no pop music, you know, not, Loads of crowns, but 
I went back to film, so there was pop music and loads of crowns. Very noisy. I got the idea for the clown when I went on holiday to Bridlington to these cabins thanks to candle lighters and I went to these amusements and I saw the clown and I thought my god I have to make a movie about this. I wanted to make a movie when I went to Bridlington because I've been to the cabins before and they were really great. They were like the type of cabins that they put in those American movies like Friday the 13th or Bloody Murder. Really crap films like that. But mine was British. British horror is good. It's not very horror. It's more of a mystery. I haven't done a very good horror yet with filled with blood and guts. This does have blood in it. This is the first time I've ever seen what I has done. And we put that 20 pence in. We were all seeing it for the first time. I wanted to get that reaction. However, that, that isn't the reaction. I didn't get the reaction, so that was filmed later on. It really was. I don't know why they created it. 20 pence for a clown to laugh. Real easy, because it possesses people. And it takes their soul when they die. So basically, if Robert had succeeded in killing Kate, he would have also then killed himself. And he is possessed because he put the money in. Kate had put the money in, Kate had been possessed. Now, this is, in the film, this is Kate in Robert's cabin. And, but it's not where Kate was brushing her teeth in the scene before. That was in a different cabin. Because we were in two different cabins each time we went. This is a really suspenseful moment. One of two. That cabin and that back door. Perfect. And that door's closed and Katie closed it, which is an oops. Now you might be asking, why is Robert smiling? He's having fun. Yes, he is. He's possessed by a clown. Clowns generally do laugh. So that's why Robert's smiling. That is why. No other reason. Product placement, by the way. Nike, Nike, Nike. <laughs> Great lighting through these trees. Orange is just fantastic. Really good filming in autumn. However, it gets dark quick. And when we went back to film, we weren't filming in autumn, we were filming in spring. So you can tell because there's no leaves on the ground. Now I found this, what is just implied, is that Katie goes back to the cabin cleans herself up, puts some new clothes on because she fell on the floor so she's dirty. She goes back to the beach to find me. She only met me on the beach so she's hoping I'm still there, which I am, because I'm a wandering ghost. Big glove. <laughs> Now, you might think that I tinted that for effect. I did, 
but also because Robert was wearing a completely different clothes to what he wears. So I didn't need it, so it was unnoticeable. Now whilst Katie was running to get back to the cabin, it was so windy it blew her hat off, and because she was scared she didn't pick it up. And that's why she hasn't got a hat on. Originally that was a double take scene, but <laughs> I didn't film the double take, it was just one take. So Robert was just walking, following her. He hadn't seen her yet. So that's why she decided not to go in that cabin because it's obvious to Robert that she's going to go in that cabin. And quickly she runs, dropping a coat. There was a reason for that. We filmed a scene where Robert found a coat, but we didn't use it. She goes into this abandoned cabin. What she hopes is abandoned. She's not entirely sure. It's open so she can hide in it. However, this point of view shot seems to think different. What are you doing in my cabin? It was my brother. You've got to help me. He's chasing me. He wants to kill me. Where now, this goes? strange woman is played by Hayley McNabb. I'll go get them. And she goes off to find Katie's parents at the restaurant at the beach, which doesn't exist. Filmed on a completely different day, this is, but tied in really nicely. This score is by Christoph Beck, who does a lot of the music for Buffy, which this is from. Ah, my brilliant Photoshop skills. <laughs> so now Kate has found out that I'm missing. Apparently I went missing on the beach when I turned 16. Which makes that woman, Kate bumped into, in her thirties. Unbelievable, that is. That is. I wanted to try and keep as much as I leave out because I had to leave some bits out from the original version, and that was the ending of the first film where Kate smacked Robert over the head. I kept that in, but with a ladle this time. It wasn't as good, but it was still good. Kate getting her own back. You've seen the amusements are different way out. Now here is where it all comes together. Hayley reveals to Katie her plan to kill her. Robert's not doing a very good job. Now this is completely improvised by Hayley, so congratulations on her part, because it sounds really good. It sounds really crazy, which is what Hayley is, she's a crazy woman who killed her son. You know, her husband who created the clown was killed by the clown that killed her son. You know, she's just crazy. The basic gist of it is that he visited her after he died and tell her to sell the clown and it possesses children and their souls will eventually bring back her husband. But Kate is spoiling it. She's intervening. But that's because I told her to, the ghost of her son. Uh -oh. Someone's gonna die. She's dead. <clears throat> now will Katie ever solve the curse of the clown? By killing the woman who the clown is basically pleasing, could that break the curse? I think it could. Okay, where the hell have you been all day? I'm possessed anymore. Possessed? Robert, you're back. Get off me, what are you doing? If you watch in the extra features, Kate said that was her worst scene. I don't think it was. She actually like enjoyed that. The whole everything was improvised, even though there was a script, it was improvised. It just adds, with the handheld camera and the improvisation, it adds to the movie. And you thought it had ended, but it's not. Here's the false ending. 
That was a false ending. Here's the real ending. He goes to sleep. He's dreaming about the clown. And he wakes up. He got that crazed, possessed look all over again. So it's a cliffhanger. For the viewer to decide whether or not Robert is possessed. If you follow the clues in the movie, you'll find out whether he is or not. Because it is, it is explained. The, the dialogue doesn't help much, but it is explained. Thanks for listening. I hope it hasn't been too boring. Um, see you later.